In this video we're going to look at how to manage the display of depth profiles. A depth profile in XBS is created from a set of narrow scan regions or even survey spectra where regions and components can be defined. And the actual profile that shows how material changes as a function of depth is calculated from these regions and components and then presented as a, a VAMAS file that is a set of percentage concentration traces as a function of the etch time or the depth if we've calibrated the etch time to depth scale. The depth profile is therefore two different views into the same data file. You've either got spectra with regions and components or we have traces showing how a trend emerges with time. So what I will do now is create a depth profile from these data and then we can see the differences in how we would like to display the data. Each one of these columns represents a sequence of measurements from the same element and transition. And upon each spectrum within this column, there's a background that has been defined over a region. And this will be used to integrate the signal from a peak. And this will form the trace, in this case, of a chromium 2p one half peak and this will be calibrated using RSFs so this will represent the amount of chromium at various points in this depth profile. And similarly each one of these columns is prepared with a region or in the case of the aluminium 2S there are regions and components. And The idea is that these will all contribute to the depth profile. And what I'll need to do is use the quantification parameters dialog window and the report spec property page using the custom report to create a depth profile. And the depth profile will gather information from each of the selected VAMAS blocks in the right hand side. So what I need to do is deselect VAMAS blocks that are not required for this particular calculation of a depth profile. So I'm going to eliminate the copper 2p and also the wide scans because both the copper 2p and the wide scans also include regions which are doubled up in the sense that in the case of the copper there is a, a component within the aluminium 2s spectrum that represents the copper 3s and I'll use that in the profile in this instance so I've eliminated the copper 2p at this point by deselecting it and again the survey spectra there are multiple regions defined on the survey spectra, but I'm going to gather the information from these narrow scan spectra in order to construct the depth profile. I now have all the VAMAS blocks selected that are needed for the depth profile, and I can create a list here representing the regions and components by clicking the All button. And in this case, I don't want to use this aluminium region because the signal from the aluminium region is also measured by the combination of these two aluminium 2s components and also a copper 3s. So I'm going to delete this by right clicking and then clicking the delete button and so I eliminate the region that was gathered from the aluminium 2s spectrum as indicated here. So now I have a set of names and formulae. The formulae are the names for the regions or the components that are defined on these data and they've been gathered from the selected VAMAS blocks so to create the profile I press the area report which then creates a text report where the columns represent the signal that is calculated from each one of the regions or the components in the selected VAMAS blocks. There's a second part to this table that represents the percentage that is calculated from the regions and components. And then on the file menu of the window that is displaying this table, there are a set of options for creating profiles and one of them literally says create profile. And what this will do is create a new VAMAS file that contains traces that have been calculated from the entries in the table. So this is now a profile and it is being displayed using the same modes of display that we use to display spectra and you can see that this is not particularly attractive for a depth profile. 
When data are displayed in the active tile, the set of display options that have been defined using the parameters and options on the, the tile display parameters dialog window can be saved as a TFF file, that's a tile format file. And when a TFF file has been created based on the parameters that are defined on the tile display parameters dialog window, that file can be saved either with the data and then recovered, or there's another option, and that is on the file menu, there's the load TFF file from defaults. And this is a set of TFF files that have been placed in a very specific directory. In fact, it's the directory that's in the CASA XPS directory that is called CASA XPS.tfd, that's tile format directory. And these TFF files contain the display state for different formats of data. In this case, I've previously created a TFF file that is appropriate for these types of profiles. So when I select this TFF file and say select, then the display state is adjusted and takes on the form of the TFF file that was previously saved. The display state loaded from the TFF file now appears on the tile display parameters dialog window. So we can see that the reason we have symbols and lines drawn is because we have tick boxes enabled that are draw lines and draw points. There's another tick box on the colors property page that has an influence on how this depth profile is displayed. That is the color by VB column tick box is enabled and the result of this tick box is instead of coloring the traces in the order of selection of these VAMAS blocks in the right hand side, the colors are now determined by the position in terms of the column position of these VAMAS blocks in the right hand side. So if I deselect one of these VAMAS blocks and then overlay the data, we see that the aluminium oxide trace has been removed but the traces that are left are still using the same symbols and the same colors as was used before the removal of this VAMAS block corresponding to the aluminium oxide. And this means that we can go through and make adjustments to highlight different aspects of a profile without altering the shape and the colors used for each individual trace. The order for these columns, as seen here, are determined by the order of the VAMAS blocks within the VAMAS file. And as each VAMAS block is entered into this right-hand side, then each time a new label is encountered, it is entered as a new column. So the VAMAS file itself determines the order when a VAMAS file is first read. However, the order of these columns can be altered by using options on the view menu. So for example, I can reverse the order of the columns in this VAMAS file by selecting the reverse column order. And we see now that oxygen, which was previously the last, is now the first. However, the update of the display has not yet occurred. So if I wish to update the display with these new column orders, then I need to overlay the data again and then the symbols and the trace colors all change according to the position in the right hand side of these VAMAS blocks. There's another option which is a new option that is reorder using column selection and this button becomes enabled when we make a selection of the columns using these headers here. So if I select for example the iron and then hold the control key down and select say the chromium and then let's say the oxygen then the order in which I've made this selection will then move these columns to the front of this list. So let me do this so I can now select the reorder using column selection. So we now have the iron, the chromium and the oxygen and all other columns remain in the same order before this button was selected. 
So now if we select the full row that has a new order, when we overlay these data again, we now have a new set of colors according to the column order and the display of the key is now following the order of the selection that we see in the right hand side. 